awkward, ain't it? <laughs> it feels funny just sitting in church and nobody saying anything. <coughs> I kind of wonder what's going to happen next, huh? Well, that's what it's like when, as a believer, you have, you have access to the Spirit of God, but you don't allow the Spirit of God to lead you. It's like sitting in church, waiting for something to happen, and everybody's supposed to look around, Wondering what's going on. <clears throat> Wondering what's wrong. Feels funny. As believers, it should feel funny if you have access to the Spirit of God and don't allow the Spirit of God to lead you. It should feel funny. Because it felt strange just sitting there. Because we came to have church, right? We came to sing praise. We came to lift up the name of the Lord. We came to fellowship together. But when we're just sitting quiet and nothing is happening, it feels awkward. So we have access to the Spirit. The Spirit wants to lead in God. Not only do we feel funny, but He feels funny when He's not able to do His job. Does that make sense? I felt funny sitting back there. It didn't feel right. Something was missing. Cause I, this is what I do. So when I can't do that, it feels funny. We have to make sure. Uh, uh, we've been talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to lead in God. Being really spirit-led believers. That's what we're focusing on. We have to make sure that we give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to lead us. Started out the first week by saying that the spirit of truth, uh, uh, the spirit of truth, wants to lead us into all truth, and that's what we're going to focus on today. The spirit of God wants to lead us into all truth. If you look at John, chapter sixteen, verse thirteen, it says, "But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own initiative." But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. So Jesus is actually talking to the disciples in chapter 16. He's telling them about, you know, he, hey man, I've been hanging out with y'all for three years. Now the appointed time has come. I got to go and die on the cross. I got to do all this stuff. And you know what I'm saying? But y'all can't understand all that now. So if I told y'all that now, it'd be like, it would be like me trying to tell you all of the Baltimore Ravens on the San Francisco 49ers playbook. You can't understand that. So that's what Jesus was saying. He said, you can't understand it now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you someone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you my spirit. And when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. He won't talk about what he wants to talk about. He'll talk about what he hears from the Father. And he will show you things to come. That is a powerful scripture in the life of a believer. Because what it says, it says that I won't be left helpless. Has anybody ever felt helpless? Felt like, you know, I can't go on. I just lost my best friend. I lost my mom. I lost my dad. I lost my wife, my husband. I feel helpless. Well, Jesus wanted to make sure that we weren't helpless. So he sent us to help her in the Holy Spirit. But we have to make sure that we give him the opportunity to do his job. Does that make sense? Because the truth of the matter is Satan wants you to stay just like you are. Satan wants you to remain just like you are. No change, no going, no transforming to the image of Christ, which by the way is what God wants for us to be transformed to the image of his son. Satan doesn't want that. He wants you to be comfortable and say, well, hey, God loves me just like I am and no need to go to church, no need to sacrifice, no need to change, no need to get better, no need to try to grow spiritually. He wants you to stay like you are. He does. 
But the only problem with that, like I said, is that God wants to transform us into the image of his son. And that's why he gave us the spirit. Because if you've ever tried to change on your own, if you've ever woke up and said, come, come Monday, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change this. I'm gonna, and Monday's still coming. You understand why you need a helper. Because it's hard for us to do it in our own strength. Especially spiritual things. Especially spiritual things because Satan is fighting to the nail to keep you just like you are. So Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. And when he comes, he's going to lead you into all truth. Let's look at this scripture. Let's dig into it just a little bit. Just a couple things we want to talk about and we're going to be done really quickly today. It's a gloomy day. It's raining. We're back going to take a nap. <laughs> it says, he will lead you into all truth. The picture that he was trying to paint was like a father who has his son, who just started to be able to walk by the hand and is leading and guiding and helping him to be able to stand on his feet and be able to walk. That's the painting that Jesus was actually trying to paint. The helper will lead you. He will take you by the hand and make sure you don't fall, you don't trip, you don't stumble, you don't bump your head, but you have everything you need to navigate your new life of walking. So he will lead you by the hand. And he will, he will lead you into all truth. The word truth is very specific here. It means that he will give you everything you need to have in understanding who Jesus is. Because we know that the Bible often describes Jesus as the truth. So what the Spirit is going to do is give us the ability to understand, first of all, what Jesus came to do, who he is, and what it means for us by him dying on the cross. What salvation really means. So in other words, he is going to help us explore the love of Jesus Christ. Why would Jesus come and give his life for raggedy me? That's what the Spirit is helping me understand. And the more we understand that, the more we fall in love with God, because the more we see how pitiful I was and how glorious and great God yes. is, and it gives yes. me a grateful attitude, and I praise, and I worship even yes. harder. Why? Because every time he gives me a revelation of really who Jesus is, I'm going to get too into it. Every time the same mistake gets me caught up and I fall down to the same thing, but the Spirit said, now that's why Jesus died, J.D., because he knew you couldn't handle this. We have to have a response of thank you, yes, God, and to give yes. us a deeper revelation like we have for our kids. I'm trying to calm down today. I don't want to get <coughs> But like I have for my kids, they can mess up all they want to, but it's not going to change my love for them. That's right. So the Spirit of God, or the Spirit of truth, the Spirit that comes from God, gives us the ability to understand who Jesus really is and what he really accomplished on the cross when he gave his life for us. He, he set us free. Yes. We were shackled. We had no choice but to be held captive to sin. So that's what the spirit of truth does. It leads us and helps us to understand or it reveals the truth about who Jesus really is and what he came to do in the work of the gospel and all of those things. And it says he will only speak what he hears. This was great. The spirit of truth will only speak what he is. He represents who Jesus was on earth. And he can only be to the 12 disciples, but now the spirit of truth represents that for all of us. So it's like he's the diplomat that's living in Afghanistan, but representing the United States. He's not there to hold up the Afghanistan way of living and the way of life and their rules, but he's there representing the way of the United States. So if we went to China, Afghanistan, we would be representing the United States. Not where we are, but where we're from and who we belong to. Does that make sense? So the Spirit of God represents Jesus Christ and what he taught, what he preached, what he done. He'll never talk about himself, but he will only do or reinforce the things that Jesus taught and what he did when he was here on earth. That's what the Spirit is going to do. He's going to speak as a diplomat. He's going to represent Jesus. So if you ever have something in your spirit that doesn't agree with what the Bible teaches, you know that's not the spirit of God. If you ever have somebody that want to give you some advice and it's not aligned according to the scriptures, you know that's not the spirit of God. If they come talking about any other thing other than the scriptures, you know you won't have to listen to it because it's not the spirit of God. That's not the spirit of truth. So don't pay attention to it. 
the thing that got me about this scripture is that this particular part of it, we need to do the same thing. We need, just like the Spirit represents Jesus, we need to become the representative of Jesus also. Whatever he says is what we should begin to say. Whatever he represents is what we should begin to represent. In other words, I'm not here telling you about me, but I'm here telling you about the wonderful, loving, saving grace of Jesus Christ. <coughs> That's what the Spirit wants to help us or enable us to do. It's not represent me, but represent him. Does that make sense? So we should not only speak, we should only speak of what we hear. Which, by the way, leads us to something else. If you never heard that, you ain't got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. So get with God so you can have something to say. Yeah. Right. And there's a whole lot of people talking loud and ain't saying nothing. Now, whole, we can say a whole lot of stuff with that. Deal. <laughs> but the whole point of it is, we need to become diplomats of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should only speak what we hear, or what we study, or what the Bible tells us to do, or to, to, to say. So we can represent Jesus just like the Holy Spirit represents Jesus. And then the last part, uh, uh, you know, this, this is tough to understand. It says, uh, he will not speak uh, of his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will disclose to you what is to come. I'm going to try to make this as plain and simple as I can, because this is, this is, when I first, I, I, I don't understand, I, I don't understand that. What do you mean the Spirit will tell me what is to come? First of all, this was specifically designed for the disciples. This one was, this spirit of truth, speaking and telling them about the future. He was going to give them the ability and the insight and the foreknowledge to write the scriptures. Because remember now, the Bible hadn't been written yet. Right? The disciples were walking with Jesus. We didn't have the scriptures. All they had was Jesus. So in order for them to perfectly detail what the Bible needed to say, they had to have something else. Because I'm sure you'll agree with me, if you've ever read anything in the Bible, ever had any understanding from the Word, there's no way that all these different people, over a hundred, over a period of 240 something years, can write the New Testament and it all be perfectly in unison, pointing to one Savior. There's no possible way that that could have happened unless they had a helper. And that's what the Holy Spirit was for. So Jesus was telling the disciples, I got to leave, but what I'm going to send you is going to give you the ability to do something that's never been done before. To tell about things that's going to happen, about the kingdom of God which is going to come, about the church, about salvation, about redemption, everything that needs to be written down perfectly in the Bible, the Spirit of God is going to help you and show you about that stuff so you can write it down, so you can pass it on. So this was specifically for the disciples. But what does that mean for us? That means for us, it doesn't change. God wants to do something in your life through the Spirit that's never been done in your life before. But He's going to reveal it now. The difference is we have God's completed Word. Right? We have God's completed Scriptures. Completed where he's not writing anymore. We ain't going to add nothing on to after Revelation. That's it. So what that means for us now is that what happens a lot of times, at least for me, let me give you my illustration. This is what happens for me. The Spirit is in me, and the Spirit will say, now, you know the last time that we came to this crossroads, you did this, and this was the end result. Do you want that same result, Hagen? No? Well, then you better do something different. So now he showed me what the end is going to be by showing me my last, my last, does it make sense? My last experience. You got here last time and you did this and it didn't turn out the right way. So why would you do that again, Ronald? You're right. And then when I'm flipping the Bible and reading it, it lines up with what the Spirit is saying, well, I better not do that anymore. So he's still showing me what to do and how to live and what's to come, but he's showing me by what the Bible says according to my own experiences. Does that make sense? Understand that? So he shows us what is to come. Uh, he showed them. He gave them uh, uh, fully explained everything that they needed to know uh, that seemed too hard to understand. Because when Jesus was telling this to the disciples, first of all, they didn't want to hear it, that Jesus was going to die. And they couldn't understand 
how and why he needed to die. You're here. What are you going to die for? You can do everything you need to do now. So the Holy Spirit fully explains everything that we need to know and everything that we need to understand about what Jesus is doing. So Jesus, if we look at the scripture and, and, and all of it, what Jesus was saying was, I have to leave. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a helper. Someone that will not walk alongside you, but that will live in you. He would not talk about anything other than what he hears from me. And he's going to show you what you need to do to enjoy a successful Christian life. <clears throat> That's what the scripture is saying. What does that mean for us? How does that impact the way we should live? That means that I now, a couple of different things that I thought about that it means. First of all, it means, um, if, right here from the scripture, that he will lead. <coughs> Think about the word lead. This, all of this verse that he will lead, he will speak, he will tell. In other words, um, God is not going to drag. He's not going to force. He's not going to impose. He's not going to make you do anything. Now, he will lead, but he needs your cooperation. Is that right? He's not, he, he always gives us a divine invitation. He's not going to force himself on us. He says, I have the spirit. He wants to be your leader. He wants to speak to you. He wants to show you what, what needs to happen, what things to come. But I'm not going to make you do anything. <coughs> So we got to understand, if we're going to have the spirit of truth lead us, he's not going to make us do anything. God is a perfect gentleman. He always sends out the invitation, so it comes down to you have a choice to make. God gives us the free will. This is, this is perfectly displaying God's perfect and free will. You have a choice to make. You can either listen to the spirit of truth, let him lead you, let him speak, let him show you things to come, or you can say, no. We know how that story is. We've done that before. So we have a choice. It comes down to what I want to do. Am I going to listen? Tammy started student teaching, and then Mary, she'll understand this because she's a teacher. But you get in your classroom, you can't make those students. Listen, you got all the knowledge. You got all the wisdom. You have all the answers. But I can't make JD get the answers and get the wisdom and get the knowledge. He had to play a part. He had to be involved in his own learning. If I'm a teacher and I'm teaching, but you ain't trying to learn nothing, it doesn't make a difference what I know. Right? If you want to be all headed and don't listen, that's not the teacher's fault. That's your fault. So God is saying, I'm sending you a teacher that's going to help you and teach you. But if you don't want to be taught, that's not my fault. You have access, but I can't make you learn. Man, you can't make those little kids learn. You can't make them stay inside the lines when they cover them. If they want to scribble all that, that's their choice. You can show them. So the Spirit of God is always showing and always speaking and always leading. But we have a choice. We have a role to play in this deal. He can't make us learn anything. I must cooperate. I must cooperate. God had a wonderful plan laid out when he sent Jesus to down the cross and give his life. Take the penalty of death away. Teach this. He, wonderful plan. Nobody else could have pulled this deal off. But if you don't cooperate and allow the spirit to teach you what he needs to teach you, it's <coughs> wasting your time. I'm not wasting God's time, but somebody's going to listen. But you're wasting your time as a Christian not listening to the Spirit. Why would I take off and, 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 and do something I don't know how to do and not listen to somebody who can teach me how to do it? He has all the answers. Right. So he wants to lead, but we have to cooperate in his leading. Does that make sense? The second thing is, he will never lead us wrong. The Spirit will never lead you wrong. Why? Because he has a vested interest in your success. God wants to make sure that you succeed. God wants to make sure that you are a shining example of the love of his Son. 
He wants to make sure that pe when people see you, they don't see you. They see the love of Christ living through you. So he has to make sure that he leads you in the right way. He has to make sure that he gives you all the right answers. He has to make sure. Why? Because he has a vested interest in your success. It's imperative that we succeed as Christians in life and not fall victim to anything. Why? Because of who we represent. Because we're a diplomat in a foreign country representing the heavenly kingdom, so I gotta succeed. And God gave us the spirit to make sure that we succeed. Does that make sense? He knows best. He always knows what's best. If he won't lead in Rome, and he knows best, it makes sense to listen. If we could go back and call the Rome of everybody who he's ever tried to lead, starting out with Abraham, uh, Adam and Eve. If Adam and Eve had to do all over again, I'm sure Eve would have said, don't listen to the serpent. Whatever, whatever you do, don't listen to the serpent. Listen to God because he knows best. Don't let the serpent trick, don't let the devil trick you into eating fruit because there's a whole lot of rough stuff that come behind eating fruit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like we preach to our kids, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do it. But they're still dumb and go through. That's their fault. You told them. And the same thing God is doing to us. He said, I know what's best. Listen to what I'm saying. Eve, don't eat the fruit. Adam, don't let them eat the fruit. But they ate it. And look what happened. God had to send Jesus to redeem us to get us back to where we're falling from. Why? Because they didn't listen. He knows best. He, if he, Moses would have listened he, and, and did it God's way, listen, the point is he knows best. He wants you to do it his way so you don't have to suffer the consequences of your negative actions. If Moses would have listened, Moses said, if I'm going to be the deliverer, I'm going to start delivering right now. He killed one of the Egyptians and buried him in the sand. That wasn't God's plan. But he had to make it part of his plan. If Samson would have listened, he never would have fooled with somebody who, uh, who wasn't a Nazarite woman. And the list goes on with David. He, if, if David would have listened to God and been where he needed to be, doing what he should have been doing, with his men after fighting on the field, he never would have been on the rooftop looking to see some woman. He never would have went through all that stuff. Yeah. If I would have listened, yeah. God knows best. And history, the Bible is full of examples of people saying that God knows best. Listen. We got to cooperate God knows best, we gotta listen, but here's the best thing about it all. This is the, my favorite one. We have a distinct advantage when the Holy Spirit leads us. Why? I'm glad you asked. We have the almighty God. Watch this, listen. The creator of the heavens and earth. The all-knowing, all-powerful, almighty spirit of God who put himself inside the body of a man, came in the person of Jesus Christ, died on the cross, went back to heaven, and then sent us his spirit to live. We have that living on the inside of us. That gives us the biggest advantage in the world because the heavenly creator lives inside of me. That means I have unlimited potential. Amen. <laughs> My potential is unlimited. There should never be a time in my life where I get to a point where I get stale, where I'm not growing, where I'm not doing what God want me to do, or where I'm not getting better. But why? Because I have access through the Spirit of God living in me of unlimited potential. Yes. The heavenly creator living in me to walk with me, to talk with me, and tell me I'm his own. That's what we have on the inside. We have an advantage. We're privileged. We have the upper crust. We're the top 2%. All because God wants to make sure that we don't fall victim to Satan who doesn't want us to change, but that we tap into the spirit and let him lead so we can become a perfect, <laughs> clear representation of Jesus Christ. That's what the Spirit is for. To help transform us from what we are to what God is calling us to be. But we have to let Him lead. We have to listen and we have to participate in what He's doing in our lives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the Spirit of truth has come to take you from where you are and transform you to what God wants you to be. 
Because the whole goal of this church, the whole goal of the Christian life, is to be an example of Jesus Christ. And there's no way I can do it in my own strength and power. I need the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, thank you.